Hello, good evening, me hotties, and a very warm welcome to our Sunday night pop-up. A little bit later than billed, because, of course, Her Majesty the Queen was speaking tonight, so we didn't want to clash with that, did we? So there we are. So welcome, welcome, welcome. You're watching Scotty McClue, the first lord of the internet, the world's top broadcaster. This is the big one, and we are live streaming on Facebook Live, just for you, Dinky Doo, Pam Sunday Special. Lovely to have you with us. Dinky Doo Scotty, says Jack. Andy McMaster, Andy Wishmaster Williams, Thomas Draghorn. Welcome, welcome, welcome to every single one of you. Glad you can join us. Nikki McHugh, Darren Meekin is calling on you and telling you to join us. And of course, tonight we can do lots and lots and lots of sharing from the off, so excellent stuff. And then don't forget that we do Morning McClue. This is Evening McClue, normally 8 o'clock on a Sunday night. A little bit of flexibility today. Uh, so what do we got here? Who's chatting away? Uh, John Jones says, Dinky Doo, the wonderful Kareem Zachariah says, Hello, Scotty McClue. How's your Sunday been? Wonderful, Kareem. I have to apologize, of course, because I said to you 8 o'clock but uh, I then found out about Her Majesty the Queen's speech, and I thought, no, no, it wouldn't be fair to clash with that. So there we are. Robert Campbell, Dinky Doo. Hello, Scotty Boy, says Nikki McHugh. Hello, Nikki. Jacqueline Trotter's watching, Dinky Doo. Jacqueline, lovely to have you with us, and a very, very warm welcome to our Sunday evening pop-up live on Facebook Live, the big one. Saying dinky do to every single one of you. Jack says, you're looking very smart tonight, Scotty. Do you like the tie, Jack? Have you got the theme from the tie? Study the tie and tell me what the theme is. All right, very, very important. So everybody study the tie. dinky do in isolation to you, Scotty, says Darren. Hello, Darren. Yes, we're all in isolation, La. Tony Stamps watching dinky do Craig Walker. And um, don't worry, if I cough tonight, it's because I use my voice a lot. I've had the cough for 20 years. So there you are. So don't panic. But you can stand a couple of meters back if you're worried about it. Hello, Dinky Doo. Hope you're keeping well, says the wonderful Craig Walker. Absolutely, Craig. Good to hear from you. Stuart Walker's watching. Now, I'm going to do some sharing right away, guys. Otherwise, we lose the impetus, the great beauty a couple of thousand joined us the other day. 6,000 joined us the other day in the morning. So set your notifications. Let me know when Scotty McClure goes live. And always come and join me, particularly during this isolation period. Every single one of us, if you've got a Facebook account, you should be joining me live at 10 o'clock sharp in the morning for serious chit chat. All right, uh, so I'm just going to do some sharing right now, guys, and I shall share to the big Scotty McClue page. There's a massive queue for friendship requests here. If you can like the page, that would be great, and if you can like the big page, just like everything with Scotty McClue on it and share it, and then we are laughing because... The reason this works so well is because you guys do such a fabulous job on the sharing. So no stinting, please. I beg of you. Uh, Kareem, Dinky Doo, Dinky Doo, Scotty McClure says, Stuart, what happens is I think if people come on, if they go off again, then uh, it says when they come back on, Gavin Hull, Sibley, <coughs> there's a big name if ever I heard one. Dinky Doo says, Tony Stamp, Charles McLaughlin, good evening, Scotty. I missed the Queen's broadcast. How on earth did you manage to do that, Charles? Tot, 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 stand in the corner. Right, there we go. Uh, Nicky McHugh, dinky do. Thank you, Darren Meekin. Yes, let's thank Darren Meekin for letting Nicky McHugh know that Scotty McClure was live. Otherwise, as we say, what's the point? There we go. You need to be sharing. This is not just my stream. It's your stream. It's our stream. This is where the world gets together for chit-chat. Fantastic. Right. 
Scotty McClure, the big page is coming up, guys. You'll see me sharing this. I'll just say that we're live now, and that will let everybody know live now. Okay, so that's gone up there. Uh, shall I put join us, or is that a bit naff? No? Join us. Join us. Right? Not that we're falling apart, but I'll just put join us. I'm going to put a capital U.S., Yes, there we are. People think it's the United States. Join us. Oh, uh, we'll a capital at both. That makes us all look important. How fantastic is that? Wonderful stuff. Uh, the Queen's speech was really good, says Jack. Excellent. She's some lady, isn't she? She's going to be 94 in about, is it a couple of weeks? Something like that. She will be 94 in a couple of weeks. James Kiddles watching Dinky Doo. Alistair King, Dinky Doo Alistair, one of our top engineers. Superb. What that man doesn't know about cars isn't worth knowing. Scotty McLean, I like your shirt and tie. You're looking very smart tonight. Well, Kareem, it's a mark of respect for who I'm going to see. And I'm coming to see you lot. So I like to look smart. Have you got the theme to my tie yet? Special theme to the tie. John Hanlon's watching Dinky Doo. Dinky Doo Scotty is watching Her Majesty. Address the nation. Yes, I thought I'd better do the decent thing and step aside for the Queen's speech. Otherwise, we'd have been up live at eight. Hey, hello, Scotty old chap, says John Hanlon. Hello, John Dinky Doo. Mickey Harvey winning! Hooray! Welcome! Lovely to have you with us. Laura Melvin, Dinky Doo, Laura, great to have you with us. Chris O'Rourke, Dinky Doo House Tricks. Oh, tricks. Tricks are outstanding, I tell you. I hope you're all joining me live at 10 o'clock each weekday morning. All right, Scotty, you should have started your show at 8 o'clock. <coughs> Why didn't you? says Brian Murphy, because, Brian, out of a mark of respect for our sovereign lady, Her Majesty the Queen, she was speaking on the television at 8 o'clock. So there you are. It's very interesting. Susan Forrest watching, dinky-doo, Brian Hall, dinky-doo, good man. Dinky-doo, Brian Hall. Apart from the chief medical officer, um, says John Jones, yes, we're not good to go there, John. So there we are. That's that, you know. And uh, I believe she has uh, apologized profusely. I haven't kept up to the latest on that. Uh, Cheryl Fields is watching. That's the Chief Medical Officer for Scotland we're talking about there. Uh, I finally figured out Skype, Scotty. Alistair, it doesn't take you long to figure something out. Let's just have it straight. Let's not kid ourselves. If there's something that needs figuring out, you will figure it out. You know, because you are that kind of man. You're an autodidact. Wonderful. Check that one out. That kept Gordon Stilling busy all day. The wonderful Malcolm Scott's watching. Dinky Doo Malcolm, lovely to have you with us. Scott McCannon, Jack is watching us. Jack Malise, that's great, Alistair. Paul Ashel Jones, welcome, welcome, welcome. James Gibb, Dinky Doo James, lovely to have you with us. I'm just going to sign into Skype, guys, because I will take some trusted calls. Right, I can't take the wee dafties because they think they're being clever and they want to ruin it internationally. But for trusted people, defo defo, we can have a bit of a Skype. Wonderful idea. James Gibbs watching, Robert Rovers, Gordon Roddick, absolute top man watching, Phil Syme, evening Scotties, Malcolm, evening Malcolm, lovely to have you with us. Uh, I loved your show on Scott FM, says Eddie Doyle. Do you know Eddie? That was Scotland's finest radio hour. Almost quarter of a million people per half hour watching it every single weeknight. Not watching, listening. <coughs> That's what we want. Kevin Walsh, thank you. Good evening, Scotty, says Kevin. The wonderful Francis Basili, the finest lovable lassie of the big switchboard. Mwah! Welcome, 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 my dear. So there you are. Good evening, Mr. Scotty McClure. Dinky do to you, says Robert Rovers. Let me just um, sort this out, guys. I'm just trying to fire up the Skype. Okay. So let me just do that if I can. 
if we can fire this up, we are in business. We are laughing. Right, there we are. We're laughing anyway, I mean, for goodness sake. You know, I mean, do you not find that we're doing everything we're told? Therefore, what's the problem? Okay, now that should be the Skype working. My handle is scotty.mcclue. You'll only be answered if you are 100% reliable. So there we are. And uh, Robert says, good evening, Mr. Scotty McClure, and thank you do to you. Gordon Hadley's watching. Paul Rankin. Jack says the Queen looked really good for her age. 94 in a couple of weeks. When is her birthday? Is it the 26th of April or something? Hello, Scotty, dinky-doo, says James Morris. So it's about three weeks. Dave Nichols is watching. Welcome, Dave. Uh, the Queen's birthday is the same as mine, Scotty, says Alistair. Official birthday, April the 21st. I said 26, so a couple of weeks will take us just about there, Alistair. In fact, it should take us exactly there, shouldn't it? This is the 5th, so uh, 14 and 5, that'll take us to the 19th, so a couple of days. Two weeks and two days to Her Majesty's birthday. Cheryl Fields is watching, dinky do lots of hearts. Mwah! Evening, Scotty, this is Paul Rankin, Stuart Walker. Scotty, I don't think our Chief Medical Officer should resign. She has made a stupid mistake, as have others. People are calling for heads to roll. Now, I think in the current uh, climate, uh, we need her expertise, says Stuart. Um, your thoughts, please, and all your McClure's. Yes, <clears throat> well, when I read about it, I saw her own tweet apologising and uh, sent it round, or her own apology, uh, shall I say, on social media and sent that round, but I'm not one for pointing the finger. I always say, let he who hath not sinned cast the first stone. And when it's somebody as valuable as the chief medical officer, I think uh, we can say, look, I mean, apparently she's had a warning, an official warning from the police, and, uh, you know, perhaps we should press on. The only thing is, um, they will be debating about the pop-up ads at the moment. But I think we just accept that. And if it's all out in the open, we say, look, um, off you go, you know what I mean? That's that. And thank you for everything you're doing. Uh, because she is doing a marvellous, marvellous job. Scotty McClure, can you show everyone your tie? And I'll have a guess, says Kareem Wright. The tie is coming up. I'll just fasten my cuff. I don't know how I've got a loose cuff on live with a loose cuff. Right, are we ready? There's my tie. Can we see it? Have we got the theme? Have we got the theme to the tie? Yeah, there's a theme to it. All studying the tie. Everybody studying the tie. Marvellous, marvellous. Right, have we shared, guys? I want to know if we've shared. Hopefully we have. Let's, uh, let's share again. Share to um, a group. Share to a page. Share to a group. Share to a group. Yes. Now, can everybody keep sharing? Let everybody know I need to get these figures up. Come on, come on, come on. I missed the Queen's speech by told it's not going to help really in the COVID-19. The Chief Medical Officer, Catherine Calderwood, has been naughty for breaching the boundaries. We know all this, Brian. We just discussed that. And I think uh, when you say you don't think the Queen's speech will help, you've got to look at the other side of this. There is a cerebral side to it. So the Queen speaking might not get rid of the infection clinically, but it does give us a sense of hope and a sense of peace and a sense of joy seeing our head of state, particularly at uh, coming up to 94. Uh, so I don't know what I was saying, Brian. Joey Peachy Campbell, all right, mate. All right, mate. Uh, loving your patterns always. Just love your phone in on Scott FM. Paul Rankin, as I say, I think Scott FM was Scotland's finest hour. So there we are. It was just fantastic. Evening, Scotty. Dinky doo. David Russell, dinky doo. How do I add you so I can call Scotty? You add me to, uh, you want to call Scotty.
Scotty dot McClure. So there you are. So you put that in and you call Scotty dot McClure. And we can have a wee chat. Eric Fraser's watching Dinky Do, Eric. There's Jack with a big thumb up. Excellent stuff. Michael Knight, what's your view, Scotty, on people going mad shopping? There's no need for it, Michael Knight, at all. I did a pop-up on TikTok. I am massive on TikTok. If you want to get onto that, Scotty, at Scotty McClue. Hold on a second. Wipe down time. Whoa, it is roasting. Have you noticed? It's like summer already. So there we are. A gentleman said he put his heating off for the first day. Uh, there's Aaron Dinky Doo. Aaron, hi, lovely to have you with us. I'd love to stay at home at the moment. Unfortunately, I can't work from home. I'm out driving a bus, transporting key workers about. Now, Tony, what's the setup with the bus? At my local shop, you put your shopping up on the counter and then you step back behind a line, a good couple of metres away back. The guy then runs your shopping through Packset and you swipe your card, he steps back, or she steps back, you swipe your card, nab your shopping and run away. Now, with the bus, when I think I get on a bus, there must be barely, there's not two meters between the driver and the bus door. So what do you do for social distancing so that nobody gets on that bus and gives you the coronavirus? Do tell. Kevin Roberts, stinky do. Excellent. Lovely to have you with us. John O'Rourke's watching. Uh, cool guy, says Aaron. Resign now. Anyone else would have resigned, says John Grimley. John, you've got to watch the expertise, you know. You've got to not cut off your nose to spite your face, you know. I mean, if you think about it, when they let me go for no reason at all, from Scott FM, they had to sell the station. It just crashed. So there you are. So you think, hold on. This is really, really pivotal. Even if Scotty, my other half is watching. D says hi. Dinky doody. Wonderful stuff. Dinky doody. Do you see what I just did there? Eddie Doyle says dinky do Scotty. James Morris, good man. Jungle book tie. Tony Stamp. Absolute top stuff. A jungle book tie. Karim Zachariah. Rob Randall's watching. Brian Murphy's watching. That's why she's made a mistake. It's not good enough. So there we are. Why didn't she get fine? We don't know what's gone on. So, Brian, you've got to watch pointing the finger. We don't know the background to it. You know, we don't know what the conversation was. We've got to always have all the intelligence, have the whole story. Wise words, Scotty, in these tough times, says Darren Meekin. Absolutely, Darren. Stephen Rodden. Uh, no, my head of state, Stephen Rodden. Newsflash, la la, Her Majesty the Queen is everyone's head of state, right? If you live in Scotland, England, Northern Ireland, or Wales, Her Majesty is your head of state. So there we are. And although Ireland in the south is a, a free country, it's a republic, as far as I understand it, there is still an Irish crown, which in theory, technically, is part of the, uh, the Union of the Crowns. Very interesting. Might give you a wee Skype. I'm setting it up the now. Good, Alistair. Come on for a wee bit, crack. Get the accordion out and give us a tune to cheer us up, says Darren Meakin. I shall do that, Darren. I've got the accordion. I spoke to a wonderful man the other day called uh, Stephen Clinkscale. And you may see famous people with an accordion that's got Clinkscale on it. And, uh, you know, he's an absolute authority on accordions. So I was telling him about my old accordion. Michael Cracknell's watching. Scotty McClure, I'll Skype you on Monday morning show if you're okay with that. Kareem, of course I'm okay with it. Excellent. Quick wipe down again, guys. Temperature's up. Woo! Like sitting in a greenhouse here. I wouldn't be surprised if the tomato plants come up behind me. 
Brian Murphy, Dinky Do, the theme of your ties, the Jungle Book. It is. We've got all the characters from the Jungle Book. Give me the characters from the Jungle Book. Comfort break, Scotty. Quick comfort break, Joey Peachy Campbell. Uh, I'm just going to turn to the side, guys. I must do some sharing. Can everybody share? Now, come on. This is massive. If you've got Scotty McClure in front of you, you should be sharing it. Everybody should know about it. Group name. So there we are. Um, no, it's very interesting when you have people that come up and go, it's no Macri, not Joey. They don't understand the whole background to how this country runs. And, uh, you know, it's not. Scott McClue fan group. Guys, if I share with that group, that'll help, won't it? There we go. Now you're talking. Right, is that a wee? Lovely wee service from Dundee this morning for Pam Sunday. I put it up. You should have that. There you are. Comfort break. Wonderful. Quick tune on the organ for uh, for Pam Sunday. Here we go. Right? Are we are we ready? Tune on the organ. <laughs> in the organ for Pam Sunday. Yes. Uh, what about the draw droplets? Uh, the draw droppers, can you not do that again? It's quality. So there you are. Uh, there's no two meters between the driver and the passenger. The bandit screen is between me and the passenger. I also frequently use antibacterial wipes on all areas of contact. Is that the machine where they put their money in? All that, Tony. Tony's driving a bus. We're going to give him the clap. That's fantastic. Woo! All you essential workers out there, health workers, nurses, doctors, all the anaesthetists, the consultants, the porters, the receptionists, everything, the ambulance drivers, the ambulance crews, every single one of you. If I've missed anybody out there, Deep, sincere apologies. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okie okay, So there we are. We know. Evening, Scott. This is Tony Mack. Stuart Henderson uh, has published something. I don't know. I'll have to have a look at that, Stuart. Don't know what it is. Jeff Bernstein's watching Dinky Dude. Jeff, welcome. She did the right thing and apologized. She could have given excuses. She was honest. Says John Ritt. Yes. So there you are. I think when you get an instant apology like that, and um, as far as I understand, it was a, a, a trip to Fife. So there we go. Huey, yes, thank you, do. Trish McLaren, yes. I think it's the fact she was telling us to stay in the house and, and she'd go out. I think she was probably very embarrassed about that. Uh, so there we are. Uh, I'm... Off from fronting, oh yes, um, Nicola's right to remove the Chief Medical Officer from fronting the COVID-19. She was wrong to visit our second home, we're telling everyone else to stay in. Yes, I think we're all agreed on that, Tony. I don't think it's fair to... Scotty, can you spell your Skype, please? Right, Alistair. Capital S, small c, o, t, t, i, e, dot... Capital M, small c, capital C, L U E. Scotty dot McClue. Uh, Trish McLaren, didn't you do Scotty? Hello, Trish, how are you getting on? Frank Crombie's watching. Stuart Walker's telling Jane Ramsey to come and join us. Kevin Roberts, how many instruments can you play, Scotty, to still conduct the orchestras? I remember um, I got the chance to be the guest conductor of the Halley Orchestra at a massive concert in front of about 20,000 people in Manchester Arena. 
What a fabulous moment that was, and they were outstanding, because, of course, as you know, the Halley Orchestra is one of the world's great orchestras. Uh, and that's that. Brian Kessick's watching. Gordon Robertson's watching. Hello, Scotty. How are you tonight? This is Brian. Uh, Dee's working in pharmacy. I'm really proud of her, says Kevin. Very proud of her. Excellent. We're all very proud of her, Kevin. Say thank you to her, please, on behalf of a grateful nation. Howard Tosca is watching. Hello, Howard. Thank you, Scotty McLean. It's appreciated, says Tony. Not at all, Tony. Thank you. There we are. Gordon Robertson. You're on early tonight, Scotty. What about the Queen? She played a blinder and nailed it. Gordon Robertson, you're right into all that. Britain's got talent talk, can't you? Oh, played a blinder and nailed it. Oh, yes, definitely been listening to Simon Cowell and all the judges on there. Uh, wonderful. No, what uh, the reason I'm actually on later tonight because I'd moved it till 8 o'clock, but I didn't want to clash with the Queen. I didn't think that would be very respectful. You know, uh, Her Majesty the Queen's up doing her speech and people are dashing off to watch Scotty McClure. Hi, Scotty, this is Tracy. In a couple of weeks, this is a couple of weeks, this is you, Tracy, bless you. Rich Clues from Queen to King. Oh, Rich Clues. You just know what to say, don't you? Good evening, Scotty. Hope you're well. Great to see you. Miss the old radio shows, says Stephen McMahon. Yes, so do I, Stephen, but I was on the radio till about three months ago, but they wanted love songs. So uh, so good luck with the love songs, I always say. What do you think about those people still going out? Well, Tony Mac, there's, the only reason you should be out is to go a quick nip to a shop where you'll be very careful to pick up vital supplies, to walk your dog right, or to take up one bit of exercise a day. Have anybody noticed an increase in joggers, right? You can nearly get uh, knocked down. You have to be jumping up the side streets all the time for the joggers. Sorry, the chief medical officer's clearly in the wrong. She didn't make a mistake. She did it deliberately for her own purposes. She should go either sign or sign. Tony Stamp. You've got to look at cutting off noses to spite feces, right? So, there we go. I'm not in any way jumping to defence or making a comment one way or the other. All I'm saying is what's important at the moment now. So, there we go. Alistair King, I got to just say... Uh, when, and I'll call pal. Well, Alistair King, I think, if I'm not much correct, I think you should be able to Skype me now. So there you are. So if you would like to call Alistair, do please. Uh, Tom McCorkendale's watching. Welcome, Tom Dinky. Do. Susan Forrester, I really enjoyed the Pam Sunday service this morning. I thank you, Susan. Bless you. Uh, Louise Earl's watching. Uh, good evening, Scotty Dinky. Do I remember seeing you on TV? Women drivers, Nikki Campbell, love it. I think that's still doing the rounds. That's about twenty-five years old. Twenty-four, twenty-five. Here's Alistair. Hello, Alistair. Uh, hello. Hello. How are you doing? I know, bad boy. You'll need to turn me down there, Alistair. Wait, you go over there with that. Go over there with that. I'll go over there. Right, you'll need to. I was just sorting him out there. That's it, aye. We were getting feedback. I can hear aye, myself coming him. back. My God! Alistair, be quiet just now, please. Right, <laughs> there you go. Have you got a radio turned up? But uh, Sorry, have you got your... Um, Facebook turned up. No, nah, it's Junior. He's on the phone. I must take the phone upstairs. That's the stuff, yes. There's Junior on the phone. He's on the <laughs> phone. Excellent stuff. How are you? I no bad. Yourself, Scotty. Oh, grand. I. You're surviving all this lockdown stuff. Oh, it's hellish. <laughs> I, see you're, uh, I see you're doing up a motorcycle. Ah, I've had that motorcycle for a lot of years. <laughs> excellent, eh, excellent. You see, it makes me smile because when you talk about an old bike, I can quite literally go back to stuff from the 50s, 40s and 50s when I was wee 
and people had an old bike. Oh, my. You know, even a new oh, bike then, you were talking maybe a BSA Thunderbolt or a Lightning. Oh, right, definitely. Big 650s. I remember a guy used to take me in the bag of one. It was a gorgeous thing. It was gold. And it was a 650. <laughs> well, that, and it was a Lightning. Oh, this, this one's a 1200. <laughs> oh, a 1200, for goodness sake. You know, is that water cooled? Yeah. No, no, it's air cooled. Air cooled, excellent stuff. Because I believe you get water cooled bikes. Is that right? They've got a wee radiator. Yeah, I've got a couple of them. <laughs> and everything's electric start now. No, I, I used to used to do the old Kickstarter. Go on with the big. Oh, I, well, this is a big. This is a big sports tourer. It's been off the road since two thousand and five. Oh wow, wow! And you're gonna you're gonna do it. I'll get it back. Get it, it's ready for <laughs> a twelve fifty. You see, in my day, a five hundred was quite a big bike, really. And occasionally, you got a thousand. Was there a Veloset thousand? Yeah, I think so. I. Eh? Ah, it was a huge thing. That's of idea. I, I can't see I've seen one, but I've heard of them. No, I've heard of them. And I knew an old boy, in, and I started work in 1968 as a youngster and uh, yeah. helping out in the boats, and there was an old boy there that was telling me in the 1920s, he says, I was coming yeah. up to a junction, and it was as if I'd been hit in the back of the neck. And um, <laughs> uh, what had happened was a riveted belt had come off. Right. I think it was an Indian and a riveted belt on it. Is that possible? And it hit him in the oh, neck. <laughs> they're, they're a bit like the Harleys. They're all belt driven. Aye. Amazing stuff, though, when you think about it. That that was probably what then, a leather belt or heavy vulcanite rubber. Oh, aye. You know, something something crazy, vulcanized rubber or something like that. Oh, aye. They still use that on the Harley Davidsons. Right, right. Very, very interesting. And of course, now it's so sophisticated. You've got radios on bikes. Aye. Did you see? I'm not. I'm not, I'm not that far advanced. Mine hasn't got a radio yet. But I believe <laughs> they have. Is that right? Aye. Some of them have. Aye. You're on the Gold Wings and things like that. Wonderful. The Gold Wing. That was another. Wonderful big touring bike, you know, fantastic things, oh, Alistair. Oh, that's great. Anyway, you're oh, keeping I well. Aye, we're then not too bad. And uh, and I see that you've got junior homeschooling on there, doing a bit of science Aye. last week. <laughs> it's interesting. <laughs> I thought, listen, very good for him and very good for bonding. Okay. The two of you are obviously, right, you're, you're well bonded anyway, the pair of you. You know what I mean? You get on very well, I can tell. All right. But that's that's. Well, we can't get away fishing. We're going to do something. <laughs> You've got to do something good, man. Well, you're a top man, and you found oh, me on Skype. Lovely talking to you. Oh, it's only took me a bit of month to figure it out. But oh, I, I, it out. I, but, <laughs> I, you'll figure anything out. You know that just gives us a queue of other stuff. You're an autodidact. Oh, Check that one up. <laughs> autodidact, <laughs> same as Gordon Sterling. Excellent, Alistair. Oh, aye. <laughs> Dinky do. Well, we, the wee boy's watching on the other phone, so. Wonderful. Oh, if you could say hello to him, that'd be great. Hello, Junior. Dinky do from Scotty McClure. We've got your dad on the <laughs> line here. <laughs> off off to your bed when he says no. <laughs> I'll see you, Alistair. Thanks again. Dinky do, lad. Right, no problem. It's quite dinky do. All the best, dinky do. Top man. Right, catch you soon. Catch eight. you soon, la. Fantastic. Right, that's Alistair calling Fee Fife. Fee Fife, Fee Fifer. Uh, so there we go. What have we got? John Marshall, dinky do. Scotty McClure, how's your dog? The dog is remarkable, as I say, Kareem. You know, we touched the Douglas Bader walk, but he insists on going for a long walk. And he flops down, and of course the neighbours go, oh, is he, it's okay, he's having a rest. I say, just having a wee seat. It's coming up 14, you know. <laughs> Understood, Scotty, it's the people who are deliberately going out with no good reason for doing it. I'll tell you what annoyed me, I don't know if you saw it on social media, a guy arguing with the police. The police said, 
Go home and self-isolate. And the boy's standing there. Aye, 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 aye. Oh, 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 you don't give it that to the police. We need to get back. If the police say, then that's that, because they're representing the law. You know, so if the police say, you just get on with it. Go with the flow. Have you never heard the expression, you can't fight City Hall? So there you are. So don't cheek up to the police. You know, don't think, oh, I'm a somebody. They don't tell me what to do. A young police officer telling you what to do, do it. That's what I'm saying. Just get on with it. That's what I do. And the police, uh, because I worked late nights, I'd be going home two, three in the morning. Police would pull me in, ask who you are, where you're going, what's going on, sir? All that. And I was absolutely up front there. Good evening, officer. What can I do for you? Um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. How are your dogs, Scotty? Mine are okay. The Great Dane supports lockdown, but the Patterdale takes some convincing. Well, the wee Patterdale just wants to run, Kevin. So there you are, you know. They just want to run. The wee Patterdale, if you had a big country estate, it'd be just away all the time, probably covered in sheep ticks and stuff like that. Great to hear you, says Fiona McNeil. Fiona McNeil, dinky do. Lovely. To have you with us. John Jones is watching. That was Alice on Fife from a Skype there. Always try to tune in to the world's top broadcaster, Thomas Peden, the world's top broadcaster, the first lord of the internet, and the world's most humble man. So I have three top titles right away there. None of your nonsense for McClure. Annie Donald's watching. Hello, Annie. Welcome, Dinky Doo. Stephen David's there. Hello, Scotty, says Stephen. Now, guys, remember, we're on live at 10 o'clock in the morning on this Facebook page for an hour, 10 till 11. People call it Le Bonheur du Jour, the hour of the day, the best hour of the day. Uh, Tony Stamp says, I was out doing essential shopping today, bought a bottle of Leith Chin. I bought it because the Leith Chin company supplied my bus company with uh, free hand sanitizer to help protect me while working. Is there gin in the sanitizer or what? Uh, see more, do tell. Uh, to help protect me. Good, Tony, that's excellent stuff. Scotty, what happened to your show on Nation FM? The company wanted to do love songs, so I um, wished them well with that. And stepped aside. There we are. Um, all right, Scotty, says Rab. Dinky do. Darren Mickin. Have you seen the world's fastest Indian? Uh, the world's fastest Indian great film. Don't quite get that. Don't get that one, Darren. Sorry about that. So there we are. So we're maybe. Or maybe not have that one. Rab Hill's watching. Wadge is watching. Dinky Doo. Can have a shout out uh, for Joseph uh, McElhatton, please, Scotty. Yes, you can indeed. I want a broth superior, Kevin Roberts. You thought you had McClure there, didn't you? A broth motorcycle. Wonderful. See? A broth superior. So there you are. You're a touch superior. Uh, dinky do, Scotty, says Wedge. Dinky do, Wedge. Lovely to have you. I've got an ashtray on my Harley, says Rab. I'm sure you have, Rab. <laughs> an ashtray on a motorbike. He's as much use as an ashtray on a motorbike. Remember that one? A wee touch of the aqua. Guys, can we all share? I am serious. We need to mega share. Does everyone know Scotty McClure is live on Facebook just for you, the new? I'll bet not. There we are. And a quick comfort break there. Excellent stuff. How come everyone's homeschooling Scotty when it's the school holidays? What's wrong with the Xbox? Well, Stephen David, I've got uh, Xbox 6. I can put six eggs in the one box. John Jones, everyone can be careless, but why do people always want someone sacked? It's sad. She made an error of judgment. If, um, oh yes, and he's on about, yes, celebrity, not condoning, right? He mentions a celebrity. Okay, John, fair enough. Um, so there we go. Uh, Scotty, the Queen song with the line, Thunderbolt and Lightning. Very frightening. Galileo, 
It was an innuendo. Yes. Who are you, says Wadge. Excellent, Wadge. Lovely to have you with us. And Dinky Do. So there we go. Mark Hampshire's watching. No, Mark, there's Wedge. Big thumbs up. Nicky Graham's watching. Alan Shepard. Hi, Scotty, from Alan in Bridlington. Bridlington. I have many happy memories of Bridlington. Bridlington on a Saturday night in the summer. A pirate ship going out round the bay. Uh, fish and chips and then a walk on the beach. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Love to Brid, I say. There we are, Bridlington in Yorkshire. Right, that's it. Yorkshire, like you see. We'll all speak Yorkshire. Uh, Tony Richards and Dinky Doo. Hi, Scotty, from Lorraine Q. Hello, Lorraine Q. Lovely to have you with us. Wedge is there. What's your top walking locations with your dog? Well, Kareem, obviously with lockdown, you're really just going out to the nearest wee bit of grass and things like that. But um, my favourite walking, I have huge walks all over the country. So the Brewer Falls up beside the house of Brewer there, that's a lovely walk. Mugduck Park up uh, past Milgai. That's a lovely walk up to Mugduck Castle, out to Craigend Castle. Used to do a lot of walking around there. Um, the lovely big parks in Glasgow are also good for a dog walk, as long as you make sure you're picking everything up, all the byproducts. So there we are. I remember a woman with a child, you know the kind of mother that the child welds themselves to her and looks round at you, the child looks a little bit anxious and stares at you and welds themselves to the mother, that sort of idea. And I remember one of my Labradors um, just sorting out a little bit of business and she turned round to me and she said, your dog's just done a poo. And I said, you're absolutely correct. And yes, indeed, he has, indeed. And then she just sort of flounced off. You know, now what should your answer have been for that? I remember putting this to people on the radio at the time and somebody said, um, you know, well, this is um, a byproduct of feeding the dog, madam. That sort of idea, you know, it was very, very strange. But what a strange thing to say, a kind of disapproving, instead of thinking, no, no, this gentleman will sort that out and pick it up. Your dog's just done a poo. And I remember the dog ran on ahead of me to a park, and there was a couple there looking very disapproving. They went, eh, is, this your, is this your dog here? I said, yes, that's my dog there. Well, well, he's just done something. I said, oh, thank you, that's great news. I'll sort that. And away they, they went, they were a bit annoyed. But of course, you're always chuffed to bits when the dog, um, you know, does his stuff because that's that sorted. Well, dog owners will know what I'm talking about. Take it do, Scotty. Hope you've had a good day, says Nicky. You can't shove your granny off the bus, says Rab Hill. Yes, you can. You can't shove your mammy's mammy off the bus. Not that granny, but you can shove your other granny off the bus because she's your father's mammy. You're needing to run through the lyrics of the old song, Reb. Alistair King, thanks a lot, Scotty. I made my wee boy's day. Not at all, Alistair. You were great on the Skype. Do you have a Patterdale, Scotty? No, but I see a lady with a Patterdale and he's the most gorgeous, gorgeous wee guy. He's got a wee bell round his neck and it rings like crazy. And he belts around and, uh, you know, you can't tire these wee dogs out. Y you know, the, you can't tire setters out. And uh, Labradors as well could do a fair old trip. So there you are. But if you're taking the Labrador for a long walk, you know, say you're walking part of the West Highland Way with them, make sure you've got lots of sustenance 
and um, drinks, well, they get drinks from a bun, but make sure you've got drinks and sustenance for the dog because the dog's using up a lot of energy. They are, and you don't want to overtire them, and they're using double the energy because they're going away ahead and coming back. Uh, so there we are. I've got a cane corso. My neighbour does not like my dog, says Lorraine. Well, that's a shame. Maybe he doesn't know him. I wonder what happened to Mr. Martin. You were right to give him a telling off after he accused Scottish soldiers of being cowardly in battle. Quite right, Tony Mac. Mr. Martin, you get it on YouTube. Scotty McClue talks to Mr. Martin. Scotty, your better half is fiddling with the thermostat again. You're sweating. I am, Charles. I've told her to turn that down. She must have turned it up. Huh? She'll be saying, I'll get them off that Facebook Live. So there we are. Wonderful. David Turner's watching. John Marshall's watching. Dinky do, John. Lovely to have you with us. Guys, can we all share? Can everybody share, 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 right now? Dinky do, says John Marshall. Dinky do, John. Lovely to have you with us. And um, there we go. Alan Smith, Dinky do, says Stuart Walker. The Indian motorbike you're talking about, um, Burt Monroe built the fastest Indian, Anthony Hopkins. Played him in the movie. You should watch it. Anything with Anthony Hopkins in it is always outstanding. Try and get a look at Remains of the Day. Yes. Um, so there you are. See if you can get a look at that. Remains of the Day. Anthony Hopkins is the butler. Uh, Emma Thompson is the housekeeper. It's fantastic, and it's all set during the appeasement period in the, um, pardon me, 1930s. And, um, you know, you've got visits. They actually, at the big country house, they have a meeting of world leaders. Uh, Michael Yule's watching, dinky-doo. Erin Foy says, hello, Scotty. Hello, Erin, dinky-doo. Don't forget the old Excelsior. Motorcycle, Scotty, the Excelsior. Yes, I have heard of. As I say, my great uncle was sadly killed eh, on a Douglas with a square tank. Do you like chips or roast potatoes, says Rab? Both, Rab. There you are. I used to shout to my dad, would you like chips, Dad? And he'd say, aye, one or two. I'll say, well, make up your mind. <laughs> David Lafferty is watching the wonderful David Lafferty. David, I hope I was making myself clear the other day. So there you are. I was just explaining about one rogue lady who was on Facebook with us. I've blocked her. She's no longer in Facebook. And she was the one that was instrumental in stirring up trouble with the radio station. So there you are. So that's that. So now you know. Evie Scotty, I know you love playing the box. Have you listened to the Scottish band Pete and Diesel? No, but it does ring a bell, David Turner. Uh, someone from government and she's crucified. So there we are. Thomas Peden, I'm going to have to remove that because it's not true as far as we know. So there you are. Your second bit that you have said there has never, ever um, been proved one way or the other. So you can't actually say that. There we are. It's not appropriate. So there we go. People are so keen to jump onto that. But I have to say to you, you can't say that. There you go, Thomas. Uh, some, someone from government makes a mistake. Sorry. Yes, absolutely, Thomas. No problem at all. I realize you didn't do that intentionally because you don't know about these things, but you can't actually say something if it's not proven. Uh, I always wondered what buy gum means in Yorkshire speak. I thought it was something you go to the dentist with. So, aye, buy gum. So there we are. Buy gum. I wonder if it's something to do with your gum boots. Somebody from Yorkshire will come on and tell us. So there you are. It's wonderful. I can remember one night I was asking a question about 
um, a certain motor car, and on came from Yorkshire. This is how massive the radio station was. On came the guy that had been the chief test driver, and uh, he explained it all to me. It's fantastic. So you never know who's watching and listening, particularly if it's Scotty McClue, you get the big figures. And this is what I want to do. I want to talk to everyone on Facebook. So if you guys can just let everybody know it's on, tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10, to tell 100, to tell 1,000, and everybody joins us. We get the expertise of all these extra people in the stream. Are you with me? Uh, Tony says, Bridlington's fabulous along with Scarborough. I'm from Hull, Hull. He's from Hull and uh, regularly hollered with my aunt who lived in Scarborough. Are you familiar with Rise, Rise Village? So there you are. Uh, Stuart Walker, Scotty. Uh, Boris Johnson's been admitted to hospital. Stuart, my goodness me. I shall check all this out. Angela Darrick's watching. I've looked on Google Maps, the Falls of Brewer. It looks lovely. Absolutely outstanding, Kareem. Beautiful walk right up the hills in Perthshire. And there's, there's wonderful walks all the way around Perthshire, you know, um, up, up to the hills there. Terrific stuff. Uh, Gordon Stilling's watching East Lothian's another place, all the wonderful beaches. Gordon Stilling, it's funny. We must be septic because I mention East Lothian and you pop up. East Lothian, so you'll know about where do you go walking, Gordon Sterling, you autodidact. Uh, good evening, sir. Who taught you to play the accordion? Well, actually, David, I taught myself. That's why I'm not that good, you know. But I have composed a tune. And if you go on to YouTube and put in Scotty McClure, The Mermaid, you'll get a tune that I have composed myself and I play it. Hi there, Scotty. Glad to hear you're safe and well. Just wondered what your thoughts were on the actions of the CMO. Should she now resign, given this is going to be headlines for days? Phil, we need to see if we're not going to just be cutting off our nose to spite our face. It's all out in the open. We know what's happened. It probably isn't good for the credibility of the advice, the pop-ups. So they might have to redo the pop-ups. Maybe, um, you know, I, I could do the pop-ups on here. Uh, going to be headlines for days. But I think um, we could lose a very, very, very highly qualified, highly experienced and well-briefed person. Very, very well-informed. Just for a bit of a silly reason, you know. Uh, that's the thing there. And uh, she has been spoken to. It's all out in the open. So I think we should be making, uh, you know, uh, sensible choices here. Paul Crookshanks, just watch Dad's Army. What a great sitcom, Jack. Dad's Army is one of my favorites. Now, can I tell you, um, for years and years, where one of the problems that we have with our public service broadcaster is that they're very managerial and administrative led. And I can remember reading about the makings of Dad's Army. And it said, even the BBC were beginning to realize that they had a hit on their hands. Now, there should be people working for our public service broadcaster that spot a hit right away. Go, this is a winner. I can do it. I mean, one of the jobs I've not, not done, but I think I would be extremely good at, is a television commissioning editor. The person that chooses programs for the network. Because I can look at something and I go, oh, ho, that's a hit. Watch that go bananas. And if it gets the right chance, it does. So there you are, because I can tell you, you can be the most talented person on the planet, but unless somebody picks you up for a network, you're not going to get seen. 
So that's, uh, that's the problem. And I have spoken to very senior people in television and said, why don't you give Scotty McClure half an hour on a Friday night or a Saturday night, say 11.30 to midnight, and we take calls, right? And I put it to one commissioning editor and went, Mm. I think it's got to be a no, Scotty. Now, he never said why, but I know it was a no because it's different. It's too big a decision. And he didn't want to risk criticism. Now, I know he would negate any criticism because Scotty McClure is massive. But, you know, there you are. You've got to. You can only take the horse to the water. Um, I've not got a dog, but I have lovely flooring. So, uh, very nice. You could take your flooring out for a walk then. Scotty, I walk Mugduk Park regularly. Is there a chance I'll bump into you? Not at the moment, Charles, I have to reassure you. So you're in luck there. Um, because I go different ways round. I used to go up to Craig End and then up to see the walled garden is all done up now and cultivated. I can remember the walled garden was just the old walled garden. Mugduk Castle's been done up. It used to be just a pile of stains. You know, fantastic. Brian McCarran's watching. Dinky do, Brian, top man. Just heard Boris Johnson's been admitted to hospital. I'm not the biggest fan, but I do wish him well. Yeah, but... Tony, what we need to do in this life is if we don't share somebody's politics, that doesn't mean we need to be horrible to the human being. You know, this is something we're really needing to cultivate that we can accept. See, I don't share a lot of Jeremy Corbyn's politics, but I can tell you he's the most popular Labour leader ever, or he was till yesterday, and... Um, He's a thoroughly decent human being. And he has some fabulous, fabulous ideas. He very nearly won the last election but one. So the one before the last election, Jeremy Corbyn very nearly won. But the mainstream media had to crush all of that. And the people fall for the headlines. Do you see what I mean? Is that sort of stuff. Uh, Karl McCasker, Dinky Do, what's your thoughts on it, though, says Thomas? Thoughts on um, what's happened to the CMO? I say let's see what's going to happen, because rest assured, the phones will be red hot. There will be big discussions going on right now. So there you are. But if somebody's superb at their job and they've done something that had a question mark, um, you know, it has to be discussed. Um, so there we are. Doesn't look good, Foreign Scotty. Why should it be so taboo? Which Thomas Biden are you talking about? If you're talking about the comment I had to remove, it's what you were saying there cannot be said um, because... There's, there's nothing proven, you know, and we have a policy of everybody's innocent until proved otherwise. So there you are. Sorry, guys, I'm discussing something that Thomas posted and I had to take it down. Uh, good evening, Scotty Dinky Do. Hope you're staying safe. Good message from Her Majesty the Queen tonight. Excellent, Paul Crookshanks. What a wonderful character, you know, coming up to 94. And I don't envy that job. I wouldn't take that job. So there we are. Scotty, can you say a massive shout out to Jules, who's watching tonight and is a nurse in Birmingham. I can, Stuart Walker. Yes. Hi, Jules. And Dinky Doo, she's watching tonight and you're a nurse in Birmingham. Thank you, Stuart. Gone Sterling, Long Nidri Beach for us. Five minutes walk through the house. Lucky, lucky, lucky man. Did you check out autodidactism, Gordon Sterling? Does it fit like a glove? Tony Stamp, I know Rise Village in East Yorkshire. My sister lives in Ganstead, not too far away. Absolutely. Do you remember the lady from the television bought Rise Hall? So there you are. Wonderful. 
uh, Stephen Mooney. I think we need to draw a line under the whole CMO issue. She was wrong in her actions. She held her hands up, apologized, took a punishment. We need her expertise and knowledge with combating COVID. Absolutely. That TV phone in, I think it would be half the scale. Rap Hill, I know it would be half the scale. Because remember, I've been in television and radio for 36 years. The commissioning editor might have been in it for, I don't know, five, ten years. That sort of thing. So I know that Scotty McClure on television for half an hour, taking calls, talking to the people, would be a massive, massive winner. But a lot of the wee guys that have fought and struggled to get themselves into television management think, oh, it's my head that's in the line here. We need a senior person to say, I want that, by the way, Scotty. Because I've told you a couple of times the saying, if Lou Grade had been alive today, Scotty McClue would never be off our television screens. So there you are, because Lou Grade understood entertainment and he would have hired me himself. He would have got the big cigar and went, Scotty, I want you to do a program for me. Friday night, just a half hour. Big cigar, all that stuff. Uh, Boris Johnson, hospital with Corona. Yes, El Salvador. Uh, breeders from Yorkshire, Scotty, I'll ask her what bygone means. Okay, a shout out for my wife, Liz, for keeping me okay. Absolutely. Now, Frank Crumby, you must remember <laughs> the wonderful Yorkshire story about the guy. Sadly, his wife passed away. And after a funeral, he went round to the stonemason and said, Ah, can you put a stone up for me, missus? And he said, Hey, what would you like on it? And he went, um, Just put, she was thine. She was thine. And when he went round a few days later to collect the stone, it said on it, She was thin. And he said to the stonemason, Hey, you've missed out an E. You've missed out the E. And he said, oh, all right, oh, I'll fix that for thee. Sorry about that. When he went back the next day, it said, E, she was thin. So there we are. So there's a Yorkshire story for you. Damascus, good evening, Scotty. Aaron, hope you're safe in Damascus. I agree, I'm not the biggest fan of Nicola, but I do think she's doing a really great job, says Jack. Absolutely, Jack. She said, uh, you know, all the other leaders just pale in the way that Scotland's led at the moment. Scotty, what's your number? Rab, it's not a number, it's Scotty dot McClue. Uh, so there we are. Thomas Peden, I don't know what you're talking about. He says she's a lizard. I don't know what he's talking. He's not talking about that. Murray O'Donnell's watching. What a top man. Uh, lovely to hear you. Good evening, Scotty. Good evening, Murray. I hope all is well with you, and thank you for your support and your lovely comments, your wonderful comments. Yes, I do remember the lady who bought Rice Hall. Uh, so there we are. And uh, Burton Constable Hall is fabulous, just up the road. So there you are, Tony Stamp. Well, I can tell you that uh, when Rice Hall was for sale, I went out to have a look because I thought it might make a great broadcast HQ or whatever. And um, I then showed a builder friend of mine the details, and he went He went like this. He went, book yourself a serious appointment for some help. <laughs> Them gutters are three feet deep. <laughs> Scotty, I've always said you should be East Renfrewshire's MSP. Well, Kareem, they've got one at the moment. Uh, I and also Rab, no need to brag about it. So there you are. Fraser Macduff, a dinky do. Lovely to have you with us. Gordon Stilling, I'm a mild autodidact, usually depending on others. Superior knowledge now. You've got the knowledge, Gordon. Clever, clever man. So there we are. And uh, Kevin Roberts says, John Myers, the late, wonderful John Myers, said the one thing missing from today's radio is talk shows, but stations haven't got the nerve 
to do it. No, they're all just jukeboxes now. They've lost it, really. Um, you know, and the DJs aren't allowed to put their personality across. I find that very, very strange. So there we are. I'm just going to do a bit of sharing, guys. We should all do the same. Heavens above, I'm going to have to push off soon. Um, no, don't be ridiculous, Thomas. Uh, Dave Anderson's watching. Dinky do, dinky do, Dave. Lovely to have you with us, top man. Very entertaining show tonight, says Robert Rovers. Ha, huh, you think this is entertaining? You wait till tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock sharp in the morning. Everybody should join us. Scotty needs to be the MSP for Inverclyde. I think they've got one, Jack. Neil O'Gonley's watching. Dinky do. Now, uh, Pam Sunday. Last one for Pam Sunday on the organ. Are we ready? Right. Right on, right on in majesty. When the Lord rode into Jerusalem on the donkey and the people spread down the palm leaves for him. Majesty. I'm going to have to dash now. Take great care of your dear selves. It's been wonderful being with you tonight. Join me each weekday at 10 o'clock sharp in the morning right here on Facebook Live. Tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 and spend your evening, please, I beg of you, sharing this video so that everybody gets to know about it. Scotty, we are involved in the Lanarkshire Radio TV at the old Hartwood Hospital. No, I wasn't, but I knew people who were. And now, Scotty, thanks for a great show. Can you tell Mercury the Great Dane to lie down? Mercury. <whistles> Mercury. Lie down, boy. Lie down. Good boy. Good boy. Lie down. Oh. Down with Scotty McVicker. Wonderful, wonderful man is watching. Dinky dooty. Oh, happy Palm Sunday, I say. And uh, lots of love to you and the family. Night, Scotty. See you tomorrow at 10 o'clock sharp, hopefully. Until then, I'll sing you the goodbye song. Are you ready? Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Take care, everybody, as you go. Goodbye, everybody. A vitar au revoir. And a cheerio. See you tomorrow, guys. I'll play you the goodbye song, right? <laughs> What about that for you? Night night, Scotty, says Susan Falls. Night night, Susan, dinky doo la. Ta la la's. <laughs>